Hello everyone, I'm your host, your SCP host, skills to play In today's video, you will learn the basics of server hosting through a hosting service. I'll show you some tips and some pointers as well as things you should be aware of when hosting a server. Before we begin, I just want to clarify that hosting a server is not for everyone, as requires a bit of knowledge and there are quite a few things you have to deal with when hosting. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't try hosting, but do keep in mind that it might be difficult. With that out of the way, let's get started, shall we? hosting service I would recommend is Exile Hosting, as they provide pretty reliable servers for a good cost. Anyways, once you have come to the Exile Hosting website, link in description by the way, click on store to go and purchase a server. Once you're on this page, you'll see a few different things. You'll see SCP Secret Laboratory Hosting, Terraria Hosting, Miscellaneous Games, and Minecraft Servers. You can ignore Terraria, Misc, and Minecraft. We're just here for SCP Secret Laboratory. Let's go ahead and click on Browse Products. Once you're on this site, or this section of the site, you have four options for your server. You can either have a safe server, Euclid server, Keter or Keter server, or an Apollyon server. Now, depending on what you're gonna be hosting, these four options will be different. So if you're just having a server maybe for your friends, or if you're doing like a big event server, then, well, for events, a Polyon, for just friends or like a small amount of people, 5 to 15 or the safe server is good. And it's only 5 a month, so it's pretty cheap. The prices are 5, 10, 35, and 55 a month. Now, once you've gone through buying the server and whatnot, and once it sets itself up, you can come to panel.exile.host and here is the main like spot where you're going to be doing most of your server stuff. So obviously I have no servers associated with my account because I do everything from a VPS. But if you have any other access to servers or you're, you have a server, it'll show up here. But I'm going to use the server I have access to as an example for today's video. So once you go ahead and go to your server, um, you will see the console, which is the main spot we can do commands such as SR or RNR, stuff like that. I'll go through some useful commands you'll probably be using a lot during your time as a server hoster. Um, one thing I do want to touch on about commands is that, or the console itself, is that when you start your server, um, since Exiled Hosting, it's sort of like an auto verified server. Um, you don't need to go through the verification team from Northwood, you just click on the link, as you can see here, it tells you to update your settings, and then it'll be a pretty long link with, um, a, it'll be, it'll go to your premises, it'll say, I want my server to be public, and I want my server to be private, um, which, click whichever one you want, if you wanted, like, a private server, so you can only direct connect, or if you want a public server that appears on the server list, then yeah, do that. Next up is the file manager. I'll actually touch on this in a bit because there's a little bit to go through with this more in depth. So I'm going to just touch on everything else before I come back to this. So moving on, we have databases. You cannot create databases for the server. So, or for any server you own with Exile Hosting since it's all managed by itself. Schedules. Um, this is if you want to have it automatically restart at a certain time. Um, so you don't have to go in and do it, but it's up to you. Uh, you can add users, so you just need to have their email, and you can give them a bunch of permissions. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You just click on new user, put in their email, and then go through and give them all the permissions you want to give them. Backups are pretty useful in case a uh, big update is coming along, and you want to make a backup just in case that update screws over something. This is the place to do it. So just you create a backup. And then it backs up everything and you are good to go and you can always uh, either download the backup 
for later and then delete it off here. Or you can like, restore a backup from here. You can lock it so it can't be deleted or you can just delete the backup entirely in case you don't need it anymore. Network, you're not really gonna use this or you're not gonna use this at all. So you don't have to worry about this section. Startup is actually pretty useful. Um, you could determine whether it uses pre-releases of Exile, if it's on like beta, so you'd be like public beta, you put the branch there, and then reinstall SCP on restart, basically, I mean it tells you what it is, but in case there's an update, uh, you want to turn this on, run it, and you want to make sure there's an Exile version that's also up to date with SCP. If there's none, it will go into infinite like boot loop, so that's not good. I've dealt with that before, it's, it's not fun. And then this one is just if there's a password for the branch, if you're doing some testing with a special branch, you put that there. Settings, you're probably not gonna use. Um, it's just some debug information and then SFTP, but I've never really used SFTP, I've not had to. So, yeah. Going back to file manager, there are really two files that you're gonna be interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the SCP underscore server where you access like your config.gameplay, remote admin, stuff like that. Just go to here and go to servers and go to server one. You have a folder in there and then now you have all your configuration stuff. So gameplay is general stuff such as your server name, the amount of players that can connect to it. This you can put to whatever you want, but just be, be aware that if your server cannot handle the amount of players you're setting, that's that's not good. I'm pretty sure that's against VSR or the verified server rules. Reserve slots in case uh, the server is full and you need to select your admins to be able to get in. And if you set that up correctly, they'll be able to get in no matter how many players are in there. Another thing is your pastebin ID, which is what you use for your server info. I'll go over that in a bit when I talk about like the template and stuff. But really, everything here is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, everything here you can just change. There's comments telling you what it is. But yeah, so all of this is really up to you. One question I see a lot about uh, 914 is, how do I get this plugin that I can hold my item? It's not a plugin. It's just a 914 mode, and that mode is dropped and held like that. Um, and when you set that, uh, it makes it so net 14, you can either drop your item and it'll upgrade, or you can hold it in case you don't want someone stealing it. Going back and going to the remote admin, this is where you set your, um, people for like your admin and set yourself as the owner. Cause you actually need to set yourself so you can have your perms. IP bands, I'm not going to go into that cause well, yeah, that's where IP bands will show up. This is where mutes will show up. Um, I don't mess with this, so you don't need to either, because there's, like, nothing in here. Um, user ID bans is when you ban someone, and it'll show their user ID, so their Steam ID. Like so. I'm not gonna show all that, but, um, and user ID, uh, reserve slots is where you put Steam ID. Um, and that person that that ID links to will have a reserve slot. It's pretty easy. So explanatory and then whitelist in case you can see uh, there's an option to turn on whitelist in the gameplay um, That means anyone who is not on the whitelist will not be able to join the server All right, well, that's about everything for server one So let's go ahead and move on to dot config. This is where you're gonna be doing all your exiled and plugin stuff um, I'll go over installing plugins in a second um, but this is where you will put plugins in and where the conflicts will show up. So, I mean, to install plugins, really easy. You take a DLL from a site. So let's say, so you come to the GitHub and then what you see, just always try and get the latest version, but check the date first. Um, this is December 1st, so I'll you know download this. I'll take the DLL and then I'll have it. When I have it, you just put it in here and if the plugin has permissions, all right, so reset the server. Uh, if the plugin has permissions, you just wanna come over here to configs and then the permissions is right here. Um, all your roles will be in here. Well, you have to manually put them in with the names exactly like this. Um, dot asterisk gives you all the perms for all the plugins um, or all the plugins that have perms. But yeah, 
So admin tools is just AT asterisks if you want all the um, admin tools perms. I'm pretty sure it tells you all the perms over here anyway. Yeah, all the permissions are right there. It's AT ball, break doors, clean up, all that stuff. So that's permissions, pretty simple. Um, the config will have the config of all the plugins. So this one has 575. This is actually the old 575, but um, this is where all your configs will show up. So it's all pretty self explanatory. Just go through, change what you want. And yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's actually about it. Um, it's just a few more things I want to go over. First off, Keep in mind that your server should follow the VSR. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it contains all the rules your server needs to follow. And speaking of rules, I'll also leave a pastebin of a template I have made in the description, which you can use for your own server. Feel free to copy it and change it how you like. That's about it. Uh, there's also a link in the pastebin for formatting stuff so you can learn how to change the text size, color, etc. But if you have any other questions or just need some support, feel free to leave a comment or contact me on Discord. The other way, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will either be VSR Audiobook or Ultimate Guide Part 2, whichever one I feel like doing first. Anyways, goodbye, have a great day, night, evening, wherever you are. You all are amazing. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.